Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier, race number eight at Belmont Park on Friday. The Friday before the Belmont Stakes is the grade two True North Stakes for sprinters. You can bet it with your own DRF Bets account. All our stakes previews this week presented by DRF Bets. Learn more at drf.com forward slash bet about how you can get free cash when you join the Belmont Stakes action. Here's the field for the grade two True North. Some salty sprinters in here, Matt. And I first want to talk about the number two joking, who's one of my favorites. He's nine years old now. He's six for nine at Belmont. He's a grade one winner, and we haven't seen him in almost two years. I, I didn't know he was still even in consideration for training, but, uh, you know, he's a gelding, so at this point, what do you have to lose? Uh, look, Charlie Baker is as good as they come as far as trainers are concerned. Uh, your guess is as good as mine, Dan, if this horse can still run. If he can, yeah, he certainly has a puncher's chance, but... At nine years old, coming off a nearly two-year layoff, I have no idea what you're going to get. Charlie Baker claimed this horse for $20,000 back in 2014 and did such a remarkable job with him as a seven-year-old winning four straight races, winning the True North in 2016, winning the Vosburg off a little bit of a layoff over the then sharp stall walk in Dube in 2016. And I think it was a vet scratch in the Breeders' Cup in 2016 and disappeared. Interesting spot off the 615-day layoff. But we always wish Charlie and horses like joking luck because they're kind of the backbones of the game. This is the kind of race where pace makes the race. And as we see from the Time Form U.S. Pace Projector, in my opinion, the key to this race is can the number one recruiting ready step with the three Imperial Hint? We know that Imperial Hint is wickedly fast. We know that recruiting ready has always had potential. Did that last race prove that recruiting ready is finally living up to his potential? Or did he just love an easy lead over a wet track? I, I feel like I'm one of recruiting biggest fans, and I still don't think he's actually this good. Uh, I think it's a matter of he needs the lead, and if he gets it and he's able to clear, you know what? He's going to have a chance in here. But I, to be honest, I don't think he's as talented as a horse like Imperial Hint. Let's talk a little bit about Imperial Hint, because in many ways he is the horse to beat. He just popped one, two, three, four, five, six consecutive triple-digit buyer speed figures to close out 2017, including an excellent runner-up finish in the Breeders' Cup Sprint. Now, he's come back with two races that aren't quite as fast, but I think you can make excuses both times. One was basically a paid public workout, and last time out he had to go way too fast over a wet track. And I also wonder, too, I mean, is there a scenario where he didn't get enough out of that run at Tampa where it was basically just him jogging around the racetrack and fitness-wise, all of a sudden they go crazy fast in that Churchill Downs. Now you're going to get the tightest version that you've got. Now, I suppose you could look at it the other way around and say maybe now as a 5-year-old, he just hasn't come back the same as he was as a 4-year-old. I'm going to be kind and say, you know what? I still think he's got some, some juice left in the tank, and then we're going to get the best version on Friday. Now, we know that Imperial Hint has done a lot of good work on the lead, but you're very comfortable with this pace projector. You know that Imperial Hint can sit off of the pace, and if recruiting ready really isn't the recruiting ready from last time out, you want to be sitting second because there's a very good chance you're taking over turning into the stretch. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to get the first run on any of these other quality horses coming from far, a little bit farther off of it. And again, if you don't think that recruiting ready can truly step with this type, or you know what, I have to be honest with you, it wouldn't even be a terrible scenario if Javier said, you know what, let's go up and push recruiting ready and let's poke ahead in front of him because I don't know that recruiting ready would pass a parked car. So if all of a sudden Imperial Hint is the one that goes out there, I don't have a problem if he's on the lead or that pace projector plays out that way. I just... Maybe I'm totally wrong. I, I swing and a miss on, on Derby Day, but I, I think this horse is still very, very talented. Trainer Peter Miller shipped in Roy H. to win this race last year from Southern California. He will try to do the same with Bobby Abu Dhabi, the number four. We have a formulator fact for Miller. Over the past three years, older last out winners making the first start off a 45 to 60 day layoff in dirt sprints, 27%, a $2.83 ROI. This horse has popped two triple digit buyer speed figures in his last two starts. He is lightly raced. You can argue he still has some upside and that is scary. Plus Plus, his tactical speed, if the one and the three go at it, he might be sitting third and fourth with a big chance under Victor Espinoza. Tactically, he could be really the, the key component to this whole thing because if those two horses you may, may mention, the one and the three, if they throw it down, Bobby Abu Dhabi sits in just behind them, gets first run, and can take this thing over. You know on his best day, like you say, consecutive 103 buyers. I don't think there's any coincidence that they're also the first two starts as a four-year-old. It's nice to see what happens when we get to see these horses mature and continue on 
I, I think he's very talented. I think he's one of the likelier win candidates. Now, he had a lot of things go his way in the Kona Gold. It was a short field, 10 blessings, one of the favorites, if not the outright favorite, basically pulled up. The runner-up, Ransom the Moon, was coming off of a long layoff. Bobby Abu Dhabi was able to save ground and draw off in the stretch. He had a lot of things go his way. In his prior start, though, the Triple Brend, that was a legitimate horse, City of Light, that ran him down. I kind of believe he's that 103 buyer horse, and he's obviously a danger in this spot. Let's talk about Westwood, who scored in the run happy stakes last time out going six furlongs and while he's won a, a lot of times three for three at six and a half furlongs I kind of like him at six he had to work a little bit to beat Skyler's scramjet a horse that I think is a little bit off form we also talked about it a little bit leading into that first start for him in the Commonwealth off that little bit of a layoff Kieran always just kind of talked about him like he was eh, you know he's all right but I mean you saw the the numbers he was going out and he's running mid 90s low 100s I have to be honest, he's very similar, in my opinion, to a horse like Recruiting Ready, where I don't know that they're actually this good. Are you really top-notch quality sprinter, or are you better off in those sort of listed stakes? A lot of people believe that his 105 buyer speed figure, far and away his best effort, came over a gold rail track, but since then he has won two of three starts, and he has a nice outside post position. One of the horses that he beat in the run happy is the solid Mid-Atlantic runner, Always Sunshine. It was a good third-place finish, considering he was off of a long, long layoff. This horse is going to be a price, and if you go way back in the machine, to 2016, he ran a couple of fast races, including the Grade 3 Maryland Sprint, where he just ran away and hid. I, I think he's a nice little horse, but I, I can echo the same thing about Westwood and the same thing about recruiting Ready. There is just a part of me that thinks he's just a notch or two below the best horses in here. Is Whitmore the best closer in this race? And if the one and the three just throw it down early, this is the horse that's going to be running late. I like the way his connections have handled him this year. I think they tried to squeeze in a little bit too much in a short amount of time in 2017 leading up to this race. You remember he was the beaten favorite. He was trying to get out a little bit on the turn for his second consecutive race. This time around I think they've spaced his races out a lot better two re winning races in his favorite track Oaklawn and last time out I thought he ran okay at Churchill yeah I, I don't think he was embarrassed in that most recent run he has done some decent things on a wet track but he does really most of his hay over a fast surface he's five uh, nine of 15 lifetime I you you asked initially do I think he's the best closer in the race I'm gonna say tentatively yes, but there's a scenario, I guess, if Joking comes back as good as he once was, he could be just as good, if not better, than Whitmore. I think Whitmore, though, if you think that the pace is going to heat up for some reason, I think he's a horse that you have to use in a race like this. He finished ahead of Chief Secretaries in that last race. That horse came back to win with a 110 buyer speed figure last week. Limousine Liberal is a hard hitter. He would be a main contender in this race. Uh, it looks like he will be cross-centered in Saturday's Metropolitan Handicap. Dave Grenning reports that the connections might be leaning that way, but if if he runs here, he could easily win. Absolutely. I mean, throw this horse out at your own peril. I think he's a nice horse. If he runs here, he's got a little bit of tactical speed, but he's probably more mid-flight than anything. Uh, if they run on Saturday, boy, he's going to have to have him tied on. Take a look at our top picks for the grade two true north stakes. We're kicking off the late pick four at Belmont Park on Friday. You're going with Imperial Hint. You're keeping the faith. This horse is fast. He is talented. Third start back. I have to be honest, this is, to me, though, a major, major race for this horse because if all of a sudden he throws in another clunker, you've got to wonder if maybe he just hasn't come back in that campaign last year was too much for him, which isn't saying much because they ran him very sporadically. I still think what I remember what we saw in the Breeders' Cup, what we saw in that race at Parks last September. If he runs either one of those races, simply put, he's winning this race. I, I'm going to stick with him and hope, you know what, maybe this is an instance where I can get a little bit of an inflated price on him. I think Bobby Abu Dhabi can get a good trip in this race, sitting off of Imperial Hint and Recruiting Ready. The key to the race is can Recruiting Ready keep Imperial Hint busy when that horse makes his strong turn bid? If he does, I think it sets things up for Bobby Abu Dhabi. I think Miller can take the true north for the second consecutive year. Race number eight at Belmont Park is the grade two True North. Our coverage brought to you by DRF Bet. Sign up for a new account. Join the Belmont Stakes action with free cash. Learn more at drf.com forward slash bet. Approximate post time for the True North, 442 Eastern on Friday afternoon. Good luck.